Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I've brought along a very special guest, and for the first time in a long time, Josh, we're in person doing a webinar together. We are. It's pretty great to be together. It is. So, Josh Mikeley, House, House of Worship Specialist. Uh, what's your exact job title again? Uh, applications Manager, House of Worship. So, you take care of House of Worship in the U.S., and you help out around the world as well. I do. So, i um, doing a lot of projects. Um, Africa and Latin America and different places like that. This is great. So today we're talking all about SoundVision 3.5, which came out a couple weeks ago. And its big feature is the introduction of K3i, which is actually the first full range, large format line source Alacoustics has made specifically for the install market. Um, if you guys don't remember, K3i was introduced with K3 back in the fall of 2020. Uh, full range compact, no compromise enclosure. It has a lot of the same characteristics as its big brothers, K1 and K2. It's just uh, quite a bit smaller, a bit less power, a bit less cost. Yeah, which, which is uh, really good for the installs. Right, because not every project needs the power of a K1. If it's a 2200 seat house of worship or a theater, right. um, but you might want that sonic signature, that, that performance that a K2 or a K1 has, just something that's smaller takes up less space, a bit less expensive. Right. Gives us that big box feel. But in yeah. something a bit smaller. Yeah. Absolutely, so um, it's quite a bit smaller. Actually, it's a, a third smaller than a K2 horizontally. It's still got a 12 inch low frequency, so it has that power that the larger enclosures have. Um, but it's uh, install specific, so it's even a little smaller yet again than the touring box. Right. Um, as we're able to take off that, that rigging side panel needed for touring and in, and in place put on some some rigging plates on the side. Um, all the same options, actually, uh, I think a few extras even uh, that you don't get in the touring box. Yeah. Um, which is which is really interesting and really fun. Um, quite uh, power efficient. We can power six K3i on the LA12X, so three per circuit, um, which can be great for certain cost conscious applications, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but depending on your install with uh, the PanFlex technology, which is that, once again, that ability for K3 to uh, be tailored to 70 degrees for the long throw or maybe 90 asymmetric to avoid that wall on the side or 110 at the bottom for the wide coverage, um, we just need a, a, a unique amplifier circuit for each PanFlex setting. So on an eight or nine box install, that, that would be maybe three or four circuits for the for the k3 system yeah. there's a lot of uh, installations where we'll use 70 degrees in the top boxes 90 in the middle boxes and then 110 down on the bottom yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense especially in um those those shoebox style right. uh, performing art centers or uh, maybe a, a more classic style church where yeah. it's going to be much more straight now for those really wide venues maybe the more modern amphitheater style um, outdoor venue indoor venue 110 is is a big advantage Absolutely. Um, so definitely something there. Um, K3i has a specific set of rigging, bumper, uh, side plate accessories, and also a really nice aesthetically pleasing front grille if you want to make it uh, melt into the scenery, disappear. Right. Yep. For, uh, possibly projection map on it. Projection map on it is a really interesting use case. And of course, uh, the K3i, the rigging accessories, and the grille can all be color matched to... Uh, just about any color you can imagine. I definitely think any color a sound guy can imagine. Um, maybe not every lighting guy, right? We'll, right. We might fall a little short. So yeah. we'll do well, though. We can always light it. So two 12s um, for the low frequency, so symmetrically loaded 12s, a single 4-inch compression driver for the HF, um, that very large PanFlex uh, set of fins. Once again, that does 70, does 90 asymmetric left, 90 asymmetric right, or 110, goes down to uh, 42 hertz, which is uh, quite robust, and it does it with the, the large format contour you, to, you come to experience, and it does 143 dB max SPL, so, so quite, a, quite a lot of power. Um, I've got this little graph, this is one of my favorites. Um, Josh, I know you've seen this a lot. Uh, we talked about this last last fall with the introduction of K3 and K3i, but what I have here is actually a graph of the response of K1 in green, K2 in blue, and K3 in red. And, and what you notice is between the three enclosures, they have almost identical tonal 
response. The biggest difference is just the power, right? And and it just so happens that that power difference is almost perfectly the price difference as well. Um, so if you uh, double the price, you get double the output, yeah. which kind of makes sense. Um, and I've taken those same three graphs and I've just normalized it. Um, turn the K1 down a little bit, turn the K3 up a little bit, and you'll see the only real difference here is the extension on the LF, right? Um, that's that 35 hertz for K1 and K2 versus 42 hertz for K3. So quite all right. Yeah. And uh, this is the rigging here on the side. It's a really simple accessory to, to bolt on. Um, there's a, a couple variations of these uh, plates. They're IP55. Everything is uh, designed for outside use. Um, it has a built-in terminal block with sealed gland nuts in the back. Um, quite nice. The enclosure is quite lightweight uh, for something so powerful in full range. Um, the different accessories we can use for rigging, right? So we have a bumper and a bar on top. We have a, a rig bar for the top, which allows you to do waterfalls or pullbacks. So this is quite good for sports facilities, arena, stadiums, um, anywhere you need to get that array up high and, and point it down. Um, a really fun accessory, Josh, I think we're going to maybe talk about that today. Yeah, we will. Is the Kara 2 down. So we can put uh, Kara 2i down fill below K3. There's a nice little accessory, which lets you put up to six uh, Kara 2i down below um, and there's even some accessories for mounting maybe a couple of boxes uh, uh, on, a, on a deck or on a platform for overfill underfill k3 might be a solution for a really large install that has a k1 or k2 main k3 might be our, our balcony fill yeah. or infill sure like absolutely yep. excellent so josh you've got a design actually to show us today don't you I do actually we have a church here that we're going to show you guys and actually this could be any performing arts center you could think of as well um, pretty traditional style um, and we went ahead and put some k3i in here and one of the things we're going to focus on and show you is actually the Kara down the Kara 2 down for the k3i sure so these are the, the install version of Kara 2 that work with the install version of k3 right. just like the touring version of k3 works with the touring version of Kara 2 right. yeah it makes sense um, and so this is how large do you know how large this venue is or this, uh, this, I think this is about 3,000 seats so it's a 3,000 seat, uh, a wide room. That's yes. almost what a, I would say a 180 degree, 170. We're, on, we're pretty much 180 degrees. Right. So this is definitely an application where we want the width of coverage. Um, can you like do a top view there? This is really kind of an interesting cutoff. This room has a shape to it. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's um, a situation. This is a challenge in a lot of projects where we might have to actually overshoot a little bit in the center and hit that wall. Right. I, I'm assuming this venue, they've, they've done a good job of treating that surface. Um, they have. Yeah, yeah. So really great acoustician who's been involved in this project um, so that we can control that a bit more. Great. So what's the array that has been installed? Uh, so currently the array is uh, 13 boxes. So we have 10 boxes of K3i and then we have three boxes of Kara 2i. And this circuits really well. And in this environment, we actually chose to do two box resolution um, with the K3i so that we had a bit more control over what we were doing for the kind of unique uh, rake that we have going on. Um, and then additionally, we're using um, the Kara 2i actually in three box resolution. Okay, so this is really, really interesting. You have 10 K3i on five circuits. So that is two and a half LA12X. Correct. And then we have the three um, Kara 2i down, which would be one circuit. So that's the other half. So it's three amps, six rack space aside Correct. to power this entire thing. That's That's not too bad. And that's a nice balance of Resolution for pan flex, resolution for auto filter. Right. Um, I suppose you looked into it. We don't get much benefit from increasing the resolution at this scenario, do we? Uh, no, we don't. And I, and actually, um, the three box resolution versus the two, uh, we could have gone either way. Um, but ultimately, the the job really specified that we wanted a bit more control over that. And that makes sense. I, I totally get that. Now it looks like with the the Kara down, you're really able to get that that last bit of vertical coverage in the very bottom of the array and hit what row one or two. Right. Yeah. And the goal the goal a lot of times in health worship for us is to cover right down to the front of the stage and really use our lip fills for imaging instead of um, coverage. And so the Kara allows us to just bend the array really well um, and and really get that coverage. That makes a lot of sense. So. Kara 2 is filling down to row 1 or 2. This works for House of Worship. Uh, this makes a lot of sense for any live music environment where um, the stage is often not taller than the audience. Right? Yep. Um, lip fills are great if it's a seated audience and the stage is a little taller. Um, lip fills are great for imaging purposes. Lip fills are great for all of those perspectives. 
but you can't get more than what two rows of coverage if the audience is going to be standing yep, at, at all. Best. Yeah, yep. at best. Um, so that's a that's a really important metric. Can you show us a little bit about the design and the choices you came to on this and, and how you achieved that? Certainly. So the design obviously is the K3i and the Kara Down. And one of the things that they gave us, as we mentioned, was that ability to bend. But one of the other things that we wanted to do is we couldn't have ground subwoofers in here. Okay. Um, there's no place for us to put subwoofers. And so we actually decided to pair the system um, with KS28 flown behind the array. Okay. Now this is always a, a choice, right? I, I hear there are 16,512 uh, different ways to do subwoofers. Right. Um, now, what's the reason for, say, a left-right sub? Because I know a lot of people have a fear of that. Yeah. Um, versus, say, maybe a center sub in this case. Right. Uh, one of the things that you run into is because of the bandwidth of the K3, um, the physical separation of the K3 from the KS28 becomes a problem in terms of timing. Um, so we really want to be able to keep that centralized homogeneous feel when we have the KS28s behind the K3. Um, we gain a lot of benefit in terms of both output and timing with that. that so putting the, the main and the sub behind it, the advantage is, of course, we have the timing consistency everywhere, right? The disadvantage is you have two sources of something, right? right? Um, if we were to do a center sub and a left-right PA, we have nowhere is the timing good. Correct. But we have good consistency. Right. So it's really a choice of design, of use, of application of what the scenario is that's that's right there. Right. I, I'm with you. I'm a big fan of trying to keep the timing as consistent as possible and manage the expectations in terms of that interference. Certainly. Um, but uh, that's a that's an interesting scenario. Though. So how many subs? That's quite a quite a bit of low end. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so in the house of worship uh, for high impact, um, we obviously well a lot of times we'll use quite a few subwoofers. Um, and the goal is so that we're not pushing them to their limit all the time, but we want to make sure that with that large contour um, that we're utilizing the low frequency of the K3, but also supplementing that with the infrabase of yeah. the KS28. That makes sense. So the, the standard ratio, and this is a, a derived formula for if you have, uh, let's call it a generic pop rock amount of low end. So right. um, your normal pop rock band, um, every three or so K3, K3i for one KS28 is a, a pretty good balance. Um, if you step it up a bit and you want to have a bit more oomph, you go to about a two to one, which is pretty close to where you're at with Correct. those downfill. You can kind of count that in that, that ratio a little bit. So we're seeing something in that range of, of two to one, which is three, three and a half dB more LF potential in comparison Correct. to the standard. So it's not a huge differential. No, and it's really just to keep that that contour going in the impro. Right? Yeah, sure. For us. Right, and that makes a lot of sense. I'm totally with you. So it looks like the K3 is doing a really good job of covering most, if not all, the venue. Um, is there any additional fill needs? Um, there is. So so obviously we're doing really good, but but you can see that we're starting to get down to kind of this 3 dB, 4 dB down range here. And so when we start to look at intelligibility, there's a need here to be able to have an outfill. And the great part is, is that we have an answer both in an install series box as well. Okay. Um, so what you see is we have some A10s that are going to outfill here. And you can see with the addition of the A10s, we actually have really consistent and uniform coverage here. And that outfill is actually a very low cost for right, what so we can get out of it. How many boxes of A10 did you put for that? Outfill in this we have app. four boxes of A10 there. So four A10. Um, that's that's a quite a, a, a little PA. You know, one concern I always see in design is really big main PA, really tiny outfill that looks good in modeling but can't seem to keep up with the main PA. Right. How is this looking in terms of difference of performance? So we are actually at the exact same output. And so we're able to hit limit both on the K3 and the A10s at the same time. And the A10s are actually being driven off one LA4X. So you have one four-channel LA4X powering the stereo set of A10s? That's correct. So it's uh, two boxes of circuit? Yep. And you're using 70 in this case, or are you using 90 or 110? We're using 70 primarily, um, and then we're using 90 to get a little bit of energy off of the sidewalls here. That makes sense. Okay. So two box circuits, 70, uh, 90 of A10, the install version. Yep. So that's great. So it's uh, for the guys installing this, the, the people installing this, it's very similar rigging, very similar termination, very right. similar connection. Um, it's low cost, lightweight, um, and it's the same headroom. So we're not going to be in a situation where on modeling it looks good, and when we get there, the outfills are hitting limit 10 dB before the, right. the main. That's a, definitely a big concern. Um, and that does. That looks like the SPL consistency is almost the same everywhere. The very top corner is a little bit less, but right. you know what? 
Um, but coincidentally, we're also just a bit less here. And so my threshold for pain tends to be three to four dB of loss to the back of a venue. That feels natural, especially in a venue that's a seat. Yeah, and I, I agree with you there. The, the idea that at the very back, it's a little bit quieter, especially in a church environment where people aren't uh, buying tickets. Right. Um, I, I would imagine over time, people start to gravitate to the seats they kind of want to be in. Right. You know, the, the latecomers, it sounds fine. It's just a little bit less loud in the very back. I always also find in a house of worship and in theater especially, um, you make sure that it sounds very good in the back because who stands there? Yeah, the ushers. And they're, and they're usually your complainers, right? right. They're, they're usually the ones that let you know if something's wrong, which is great, and also if they can't understand or hear. Right. So that's a big help. Now, do we have any other fill speakers? You did lip fill, I'd assume? We have lip fill, um, and, and again, we use lip fill for imaging, not really for coverage. But one of the other things that we have is we also have a center fill here. So we added a center fill of an X15, and really what that's doing for us um, is just filling this little bit of a hole that we had here in terms of coverage as the array wraps down it as we get closer. Um, but the other thing it does is it pulls precedence back to the center, because typically where the pastor is standing is downstage center. And what we're doing is trying to pull that precedence back so that we're not hearing him from over here and seeing him from here. So this is really neat. You're getting the benefits of a center cluster, but you're really only applying it to maybe what, uh, 50, 75 seats Correct. in the middle. Yes. Um, and, and, and you're doing it with a relatively low cost speaker in comparison to everything else Correct. with a single of the X series point source boxes. Right. Um, that's a really great use of that. I, I'm a big, big fan of even simple center fills. Um, especially as I would imagine uh, it looks like it keeps up fine, but ultimately that, that speaker is not getting full mix. It's just going to get the vocal bus. Yeah, sometimes it's just a vocal bus. A lot of times we'll actually just do a mono sum. And the way that that works and, and where it's really nice is sometimes when we're sitting down here, um, because it's a mono sum, it kind of gives us this pseudo semi stereo image in a place that would be drastically mono normal. Yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Cool. I like that. Um, Lip fill, and did you use, uh, what speakers did you use for lip fill on this particular project? So we used X8s as a lip fill on this project. And that's quite a few. How many did you end up uh, putting in on this project? Do you know, was it 10 or 11? I think we are at, um, we're at 10 lip fills okay. for this project. Um, you can see that obviously right now they are at full gain, so we're seeing um, the effect of that. Um, but as we spoke, as we talked, when we're standing, those are really only affecting the people up there. And their level is going to be brought down, but we have plenty of headroom within those. We're really choosing the X8 not because we needed the SPL, but more we wanted the tonality match sure. and the bandwidth um, that played a little nicer with the main VA. That makes sense. Yeah. That's really neat. So this is a really great project, a really great use case for the K3i, Kara 2i. Um, I, I, uh, I can't wait to get a chance to go out and hear that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. If you have questions, we'll do our best to answer them in the chat. Um, we'll be around for that. Josh, it's really fun to do this together. I know. It's great to finally do this after so long. So everyone out there, be well, be safe. We'll see you soon. Thank you.